Hello, everyone. Welcome to the LTG Show. This is episode 186. My name is Sean Wilburn. I'm Tony Hannity's. And we are here to talk about the latest tech news of the week. And, uh, well, just give our opinions on it, talk a little bit about it, give some more understandings, and maybe a new insight on many of the things that are going on here. So this site, this is part, the LTG show is part of the website, lazytechguys.com. Please go ahead and visit the website. It is a great website where we have a lot of news about tech, mobile, as well as video games. Um, we'll give you some contact information for us also at the start of the show. That way, so you'll know how to reach us if you would like to reach us. Comments at lazytechguys.com. That's the email that you want to use. And the telephone number, area code 707-722-5299. Use that uh, telephone number. Give us a call. Leave a voicemail. We'd love to hear from you. Now, this is a live broadcast on the Google, um, well, the Google Network, Google Hangout, Google, Google Hangouts. So if you would like to interact with us, the Q&A is absolutely open. So we encourage you to go ahead and shoot us a question. And given that it's somewhat relevant to what we're talking about, we will do our best to respond to it, answer it, and that kind of good stuff there. All right. So we will start off by asking the very important question of, Tony, how are you doing today, man? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well also, man. Be eventful week or so for you, or uh, just a very busy weekend. Oh, and we got MacWorld coming up this weekend, Woo. and yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, to uh, a lot of tech stuff, a lot of stuff <laughs> to talk about. Oh yeah, excited. Uh but yeah. <laughs> well, I'm definitely excited about this first one, though many people are very, very upset about this. And this is actually kind of a very a shocking one. I actually saw this news and I was kind of my jaw kind of hit the jaw my the table and I was like, your jaw what? hit your jaw. Well, my jaw hit my table. Yeah, well, my <laughs> upper jaw hit my bottom jaw, which in turn hit the table nearby. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Facebook, that company that has a very popular social network that we all are very familiar with, has bought this company called Oculus, the virtual reality company Oculus. And they bought, purchased them for just a few, just two billion dollars, and that's about it. Um, that's two Instagrams, by the way, for those of you keeping score. And But only, what, one-eighth of a WhatsApp? Of a WhatsApp, yeah. yeah. One-eighth of a WhatsApp, but two Instagrams. Messaging is important, buddy. The message is important, but not as apparently as important as VR now. Well, VR, so virtual reality, this is a big deal. So VR, if you're not familiar with the Oculus, the Oculus um, product was called the Oculus Rift. It started off as a Kickstarter project, um, and over it got a lot of support, and it has fueled over these years to the point where now they have these dev kits that are in the market. They were making all the, there were other many different PC things that they were making. Like, here's an example of one demo to give you an idea of what they were doing with this. And this one, when I saw this, even I kind of jumped when I saw it. But this is the guillotine example. I think I gave you this one, Tony, last week. Well, what they did was, you, as soon as you put the thing on, you immediately see, like, a basket. And since it's a VR, you have 360 degrees of vision, but you can see, like, in one direction. So you immediately look up, and you can see ahead of you, and you see a basket. Then you're looking around, you're like, what the heck? And then the minute you look up, all of a sudden you realize that your head is in a guillotine and the blade is coming down and everyone who, who they did that demo to jumped because of how realistic it was because in that thing you were completely surrounded by it in this world and all of a sudden while well, you're about to get your head chopped off. So Just it is another a, day in the French Revolution. <laughs> so like the, video, I there. the Oculus has been it's a video game accessory, or that's what it was it's been marketed as all this time. It's been a, a video game accessory that people could utilize and really create games. And these development kits are out there where people are actually like they're starting to make all these ideas and these kits and these games for this system. Now Right while this is getting popular, Sony, of course, announced their Project Morpheus, which is their VR kit. We talked about that last week. And Facebook suddenly buys Oculus for $2 billion. Now, why would Facebook be interested in buying a virtual reality company? Tony, why would Facebook, of all companies, be interested in buying a virtual reality company? Maybe they know something about social networks of the future that we don't know. Maybe they want to get in the, the, the forefront of 
taking advantage of you know the 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 years of what we saw in Lawnmower Man and the books that you <laughs> and I have been talking about, where virtual reality wasn't necessarily like the cool thing to have. It was just the thing to have, and maybe they're going to see that oh, you know the social interactions that we have over IRC and other chat rooms or on Facebook walls in the future where you're going to put a helmet on or whatever and actually be able to talk to that person in a virtual environment and, you know, you can look around and it looks like, you know, Jerry Seinfeld's apartment and things like that. Um, or what Zuckerberg said that, you know, it's not just going to be something for gaming. There's obviously going to be something that, you know, you could uh, tap into a classroom that you can't go into. It's going to help uh, doctor visits for people that, that can't make it to the doctor, like if they're in a, in a different country and the top specialist is in a completely different country, they can pop on a virtual reality headset, talk to them somehow over VR, and, you know, maybe even get some, I wouldn't say get some work done, but hey, who knows? Um <laughs> The, the sky's the limit with virtual reality. The, there are two camps on this, uh, one of which is Facebook is creepy, and I don't <laughs> want to have anything to do with it. And the other side, which is kind of where, Sean, I think you and I both stand, is uh, this is exciting. And although Sony did announce Project Morpheus last week, this just kind of makes vir virtual reality that much more of... Um, well, of a reality, that it's, it's something that's going to <laughs> stick... That yeah. it's not really a trend. It was a trend back in the late '90s, or rather, early '90s, late '80s. You know, with the with the Virtual Boy, and like, and those like huge, really like, redonkulous virtual reality headsets at the arcade uh, arcade alley. Uh, but this is going to be something that I wouldn't say in the next year. I wouldn't even say in the next two years, but possibly in the by five years from now, it's something that everybody can afford and take advantage of, not just for gaming, but for other purposes as well. One thing I talked to Rad about, uh, and I want to hear your opinion on this, Microsoft is a, uh, is a an investor into Facebook. Mm -hmm. And although Oculus Rift currently only works on PC, do you think this is, this is kind of Microsoft's way of saying, oh yeah, we're not going to work directly with you, but we're here to help, um, you know, to help uh, virtual reality for the Xbox One and uh, PC games? I would say Microsoft should be willing to do that, not just for PC games or the Xbox platform, and not just the Xbox One, more like the whole platform, because they're trying right. to make it a whole entire platform for the PC as well as the computer, uh, the, the console. Uh, they should want to do it for the exact same reason that when I saw this move and I got to thinking about it, the first thing that went through my head was, I really should have invested in Facebook. <laughs> That is the very first thing that went through my mind when I saw this. Now, okay, what so sorry. Yeah, because to me, because okay, so I'm gonna okay, I'm we're, I'm gonna go read a quote from not read it. This is from Zuckerberg. It's something that he was saying about this whole merger, and this is kind of how how I'm seeing this entire move here. Mobile is the platform of today, and now we're getting ready. For the platform of tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Oculus, yeah, he said tomorrow twice or three times in that sentence, just so you know. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Um, <laughs> Oculus has the chance to create the most social platform ever and change the way we work, play, and communicate. We are excited to work with... Oh, anyway. Um, they're excited to work with the team, blah, blah, blah. So... Essentially, they're looking for a platform. Yeah, the so, key is... I'm yeah, just imagining him saying, like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 you I get it. it. You get said, it. Fine. Yeah, you whatever. get the idea. As soon as I read the rest of it, I'm like, okay, they're just re they're, being, they're being redundant with what they're saying. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> now it's just PR talk. Okay, yeah. fine, whatever. <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, now we're getting uh, PR talk ignore. Anyway, so... But the thing about it, it gets me, is the next platform. Now, when I... When I was looking at this, what I saw instantly, and this I keep, I keep hammering this on. I hammer this on the Lords of Gaming show all the time, and I say it on this show too, but there's this one book called Ready Player One. Now, I want you to listen to this book. If you want to understand what is the possibility of where you could, what you could do with this and a social network, check out this book. So, Ready Player One. And now, if you don't want to pay money for it, you don't have to pay money for it, sign up for audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Use that URL. Use our thing. Sign up. You actually, that book is one of the options you can get for free. Download it for free. Listen to the whole book. It's worth it. It's a good book, too. It's like, it, it's like not 
entirely adult, not entirely kid. It's kind of like teenager to young adult kind of. I mean, teenager to yeah, young adult kind of language. But anyway, yeah, my book was definitely book. adult. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Pierce Anthony book. <laughs> not so, appropriate. <laughs> to get to get you an idea of um of what what happens in this book, and I kind of understand why I'm saying this relates to what Facebook is doing in this book. They had a um. In his book, everyone wore this VR headset. It was called the uh, sorry, and you vi- and you joined this world called the Oasis. What it was was a VR headset that they put on their heads, and they would be in into this entire world. And they wore haptic gloves that had some kind of tactical feedback cap- capability. That's not something we have today. Um, but what would allow them to do is put it on, and then they would be able to interact with the world with their hands and be able to shake people's hands, talk to them, be able to type on a panel, load up something, order dinner from the left side, look at an ad, you know, and to be able to control this avatar that they had in these virtual worlds. They had, though, in the book, they had school, they had worlds of schools, they had worlds of games, they had worlds where you could be a superstar, they had sporting events where you could go and watch a sporting event, and you could literally go be there virtually and as if you're watching a game, but in reality, you're not actually there. You're sitting at home in your in your living room. So it, if you – it goes a lot deeper than that. And by the way, that, that's what the whole book it takes place in that kind of a virtual world. But Facebook has the capability. They have a lot of backing. They have a lot of money. They have the ability to possibly – build a social network in about maybe 10 to 15 years, and if they start this Oculus, and everything virtual reality that is in the consumer world kind of has that Facebook name on it, and you see this virtual world saying, hey, Tony, let's go hang out on Facebook, but no, let's hang out on the beach. We both throw our wrists, our, our Oculus glasses on. Next thing you know, we're hanging out on the beach, and we're having a conversation verbally as if we're talking to each other. It, it could be a very, very cool thing you know, How much? that goes beyond gaming. See, like, I, I, it, we live in a world right now where everything needs to be convenient. So now texting is convenient. It's not convenient for me to talk to, to, um, to call you, let alone video chat you. So do you think, as technology gets better, that for me to say to you, let's go meet at uh, the Statue of Liberty just because we can over VR? Mm-hmm. That process of getting it all set up is going to be as easy as it is just opening up a simple text app. We hope it will be. I, you know what? I highly doubt it will be like that at first, but just like mobile, over time, you know, our phones start off one way, and now look at them. Yeah. Imagine where VR could be. If they, say if, now, the Oculus Rift was supposed to be a product that's supposed to make it in customers' hands as soon as like early next year. That well, was we the did idea. See the, we did see the last... Developer kit yes. around the same time Project Morpheus was announced and demonstrated. So this exactly. is the last developer kit, and uh, the actual consumer kit uh, hopefully yeah, will just like you said soon. Yeah. So or, or early next year is the target goal. So if they nail that early next year, then think about 12 years from now, 10 years from now, what they can do with the technology. Yeah. It can go a long way. Now, for all the gamers who are really upset about this, Oculus has already said that they are not going to change any of their gaming plans. As a matter of fact, as long as they keep the gaming stuff alive, I honestly believe that they can they can fuel this and make this thing a success. Because every single smartphone that we had that says, here's all your productivity, the first thing we all start looking for is, where's the games? And if there's a lot of games on it, we kept using it. <laughs> so... I'm sure that they will make sure that the games are fun so that when you're not doing something business-related, you can go kill some dragons for a while and then come on back in and get back to your schoolwork. (laughs) I think another thing people have issue over is, you know, how Facebook basically sees you as a commodity and not a a user. And so as you're playing, are they going to put pop-up ads? Or am I going to see ads every time I want to play a game? Like, well, we could speculate. Sure, somehow. You know what? Maybe they'll have a premium or premium version, and you pay more, pay more to, to to get rid of the ads. I don't know. Well, that actually goes, the cost that of actually, getting something for free. For Facebook is free, so 
Well, that goes into another Ready Player One thing. They had different planets, and different planets were sponsored by different companies, and different companies could have different rules. If you go to the planet mm. that has no ads, you can go to the planet that has no ads. You go to this other planet, there's going to be ads, but you don't have to pay to get there or something. And I'm sure they can work out an ecosystem where you can actually have both, and everybody could be happy. Now, one question, I want to ask you this last question here. Does it look like, now, from what we have, from what we're talking about, I saw this comment a lot online when, as I was reading this, and people were saying that Facebook, now they don't know what they're doing. They have no direction. Do you believe that? Do you feel that they kind of don't have a direction or they're just floundering around looking for something that's going to stick, or do you think they actually seem to be have an idea of what they want to do? I think they know. I, I wouldn't say they know exactly that virtual reality is, is going to, um, is going to like save them in the future and, and be that much more ahead of the likes of things like Google Plus or anything like that. But we are getting into this uh, situation where virtual reality is starting to become at the tip of everybody's tongue from techies to normies. And uh, now that Facebook is tr trying to get an early start on it, I think it's going to do them if anything, it's going to do them good. Um, now, I, you know, if anything, if the virtual reality thing doesn't pan out, they're going to take the adva uh, take advantage of it and you know uh, use the technology and maybe integrate it into something else. I don't know, but um, I, I don't think they've lost their way so much. They're, I don't know, and to a certain degree, to me, they're they're, they're kind of pulling a Samsung. They they have the money to just buy stuff, and they have the money to pos to be able to take risks and say, "Hey, let's just see what this ha what happens." You know, maybe we won't, we won't do v uh, virtual reality Farmville, but we'll take advantage of this virtual reality and and um, have people have that hollow deck experience, um, mm -hmm. which we all kind of grew up to really want. And maybe this is the first step to that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm looking I'm very optimistic about it too. I am I'm too, very curious yeah. to be what this is going to be. Now, of course, you and I will be a lot older by that time, no, and I'm our not. kid and our kids are probably going to see it and experience it really fresh. But you know what? I know I'm going to get my Darth Vader duel in. I'm telling you that, <laughs> and it's going to. I actually I just want to have a virtual reality world where you actually on like the Star Wars the Death Star like cockpit area when you do have the Emperor there, and you are literally in a battle and you're sitting on the cockpit looking around. I mean, imagine just how cool that would be. You're like, here I am. Hey, so um, I watched the full video of Darth Vader duel that you were talking about, and I actually have played that game, and I was terrible at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though it said, move the joystick to your left, I was still like, no, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, no one was that good at that game, dude. <laughs> Well, except for the few people who are on YouTube now filming it. Apparently All right. so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go on to our next topic. Now, our next topic is just a quick update. I just want to give you guys an update on this here because we mention it periodically, and it, it helps to kind of let you know what is going on with it. Microsoft and Nokia, I'm, I'm sure we mentioned these two companies before. They, um, You know they're expected to merge, but the merge hasn't happened yet. It looks like the merge is supposed to happen by the end of this month, but it looks like it's happening toward the end of April. So by then, they should have all the green lights from the Justice Department of the United States and the Euro European Commission. And at that point, well, Nokia will be officially part of Microsoft. So you excited for that one, Tony? Or oh, yeah, of course. Curious to see what they're going to do? or Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I, I know that the, uh, apparently Nokia is going to have some sort of event that's going to coincide with Build next month, mm -hmm. and um, you know we're definitely excited to see what other Lumia uh, devices come out of that. Awesome. I'm curious about it too. Just I you know when when a big change like this happens, you know you want to see what they're gonna what they're gonna do. Like when we had the new CEO, when Apple had the new CEO and Cook took over, everybody was like, what are they gonna do? Yeah. All eyes on them. So, once again, I got my eye on Nokia and Microsoft. I just want to know what they're going to do with their first mobile uh, push here. So, all right. Now, new phone, the HTC One. Wait, we're not going back in history. This is apparently a new HTC One. Well, now it's called the HTC One M8. Okay, versus the HTC Two. Well, yeah, because you don't want to be second. No, you want to be either. one. You want to be first. Mm -hmm. And not to be confused with the old HTC One. Or the HTC One X, or the HTC One S, or the HTC One X Plus. Um, 
Or oh, the one plus one. Branding consistent. Um, or the Xbox one. Yeah, the branding or is the one drive. <laughs> okay, with. okay, so this is getting a little old now. I'm but gonna anyway. be that I'm gonna be that one person that just buys everything that has the word <laughs> one in it. Um okay, so this was probably HTC's worst kept secret over the past couple of months. We've seen specs, we've al- we've already seen videos of it, and uh, we all pretty much knew exactly what was coming out of the press event today um, on Tuesday, the 20th, uh, 25th of March 2014. But in any event, it was still a pretty cool event, pretty cool announcement, and we finally had the M8. And M8 was the code name, but they're actually using that part of the official name. And the HTC One M8 is actually a really beautiful flagship phone starting off with the year 2014. So let's just start off on the the basic specifications of it if you haven't already seen it. It's still metal design. It still has a full aluminum uh, uh, chassis. It has uh, three different colors. Gun metal, I'm going to say the full full name, amber gold, and glacier silver. Uh, Because, you know... It's different than regular silver. <laughs> uh, has a full sorry, Sean. It has a full 1080p Corning Gorilla Glass 3 5-inch display, Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor, and depending on where you're getting the device, it can be either 2.3 or 2.5 gigahertz quad-core CPU. It's running Android 4.4.2 fulls um, KitKat, so the the latest version of KitKat, which is a first for HTC, with Sense 6.0, and has HTC Blink Feed. That's really nothing new than before. Total storage is going to be either 16 or 32 gigs, and a new improved, uh, a new addition with, uh, which is the expansion slot for micro SD card, all the way up to 128 gigs. It actually there wasn't an um, there wasn't an SD slot last time. Two gigs of RAM. Full LTE, all the different radios and everything that you can imagine worldwide. Uh, now, on the front, the the front-facing camera, it's actually mm-hmm. coined as the selfie camera. That's what it's na- That's what it's known as. It's the selfie. It's a five-megapixel camera. Where's and, that face palm? It face palm, boom, right there. Hey, they're taking full advantage of the word of the year from Oxford, and people are using it for selfies. Damn so you, Oxford! Why the <laughs> heck not? <laughs> Oh, um, God. What's really nice about it too, though, it actually does have HDR capability. So if you are taking that beautiful selfie of yourself at three in the morning for some strange reason, uh, you can do HDR and you would look even better. Uh, and 1080p full video recording on the front. On the back, it has the infamous HTC Ultra Pixel with BSI center uh, sensor, and it's a four megapixel camera, which takes much better pictures in low light. Uh, but the huge difference between this one and last year's model, it has the duo camera. It does have that extra camera on the back, but it's not really meant for like 3D imaging or anything like that. It's meant for mo- more post-editing. So, for example, Sean, you're familiar with the Lightro camera that Vic brought to our attention like four years ago? Sure. Where you can yeah, take a- absolutely. You can take a picture, and then after the picture's already taken, you could... You could uh, change the point of oh, yeah, yeah. Um, a focus. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. with this duo camera, you have that ability. I forget what the the term is called, uh, but it's in the editing abilities. Um, hmm. Also, you have some more foreground editing. You have this kind of dynamic 3D editing uh, where if you, uh, depending on how you look at the picture, if you turn the phone left to right. It kind of looks 3D-ish. I don't know how better to to, um, to call it. Um, anyways, the the Lytro feature is, is actually called U-Focus. It doesn't have Beats audio, but it does still have boom sound. And the booms, the B for boom sound looks like the Beats audio logo, uh, but it's great sound. It of all cell phones, this is the best sounding um, cell phone for like listening to music. You. You, even at full blast, it doesn't get distorted or anything. It's really, really good. Very good for bass. Not too heavy. Boom. And, huh? Boom. Boom sound. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. 
everything else is, is pretty much uh, pretty standard. And for those of you that aren't going to get the HTC One M8, uh, you can actually download some of their key apps in the Google Play Store, even if you don't have an HTC device. You can download their gallery app and a few of their other things. Um, I would say one of the biggest things that this phone has over any of the other flagship phones is that it's available to, to, to buy now. Oh. So I actually went to the Verizon Wireless store nearby where I was working today, um, Union City, California, and I went and checked it out. And it is a really nice device. They even had that dot matrix uh, screen on there too. If you haven't checked it out, it's just kind of dot matrix cover of when you close it, uh, you can still get all this animations and all this notifications, and but it has this kind of dot matrix looking design. So go check it out. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. Just HTC One M8 dot matrix. Just type that into your favorite search bar, and you'll you'll definitely find it. Uh, but it's very light, it's a very sleek back. So it, you know. A little too sleek for my for my liking. There's no grip or anything like that. The camera, you know, it's 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 cool. It's I, you know, it's not the greatest camera out there. Um, I I still prefer my uh, Note 3 camera. It's uh, to me, it, it, t it takes some really great photos. And there's obviously a lot of people that think the iPhone 5S camera is the, the best thing the best camera out there as well too. Um, HTC is definitely uh, trying some new things. I one thing I do like is that it's not so gimmicky. You know, the the, the thing that Samsung has is that they have so many features that it becomes too gimmicky. Like uh, the fingerprint scanner, it's cool, but it's not like you don't necessarily need it. We've been great without one. Um, the heart rate monitor. I know that we're all really into health and fitness and everything, but I don't know. Um, the, not the vast majority of people are going to use that, but they, they definitely put a lot of work into really trying to make this new camera technology and software work a lot better. And it's still not there, but what's really nice is I think because it is very much software-based, they could fix a lot of their quirks and issues through software. So um, I also had a chance to check out the Galaxy S5 on Sunday. And so for those of you who don't know, you can actually go to certain Best Buys uh, here in the United States and check it out at the Samsung booth. So I went ahead and did that uh, also in Union City in California. And um, it, what was a good experience was that I was actually able to experience both of these phones you know, in a close time frame. You know? So um, the Galaxy S5 I thought was very well built. Um, and the HTC One, uh, the M8 was also very well built. It was a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, um, and the uh, the overall interface with Sense 6.0, I think, was a little bit faster, a little bit snippier, and it wasn't very convoluted or anything like that. Um, I'm not sure how I stand on this. I've been using Samsung devices for for many many years, and uh, HTC. Uh, I kind of gave up on a little bit, but I think this might get them back on track. And considering you can buy the phone right now, which right now. other than the Nexus devices, this has never been done before. Like with an iPhone, you you had to wait maybe 10 days, but not with, H, not with this. Now, what they're not doing and they need to do is market. They – I – I haven't seen that much marketing, except for like YouTube, of course, but that's on their own channel. I haven't seen advertisements. I haven't seen paper ads. Um, I don't know if they have – I don't listen to the radio, so I don't know if they have radio ads going out already or not. Um, but they need to take advantage of the fact that they're out before the Galaxy S5. That's just my opinion, but I'm telling you they need to because last year – Mm -hmm. Everyone was raving about the HTC One, but it took like a month and a half to actually come to the market. And by that time, people were like, oh, well, I'll just wait for the S4. And that's exactly what happened, you know? So, yeah, if you, if you get a chance to go, try, uh, go check it out, if you have any inclination of if, uh, if uh, you want to get a new phone, uh, it's in all Verizon stores. It's in all AT&T stores. Go, go uh, play with it. 
And uh, it's one ninety nine on a two year contract or without a contract. I think it's like six hundred bucks. And the other thing too, if you don't want to get a carrier based device, the Google Play edition will also be available as well as a developer edition too, directly from HTC. So go check those out right now too. I think I think they're available in the Google uh, in the Google Play Store at the moment. Let's find out right now. Google Play. Awesome, Google, man. Google Play. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Solid device. Seems like an overall another good flagship phone. Um, I know I always give HTC a little crap for the one, but at least they're being consistent with the one name. So. Yeah. Also, it's yeah. a little. For those of you who haven't seen it, and they, you can't really imagine it. Uh, it's a little bit taller than the original one, and because it's, it's five inches, so it's a little bit taller. There's no more capacitive buttons next to the HTC logo. There used to be capacitive buttons next to the logo itself. Now the buttons are on the screen, so that might be a little bit of a change, especially if you're going from the original one to the uh, to the M8. Um, but obviously, you know, with change, you just have to go with it. And uh, there's a few more gesture things, like to turn the screen on. You can just double tap on the screen, which just turns it on. Uh, if you swipe up. It goes to Blink Feed, I think, and if you swipe to the left, it goes to the, to the last app that you were just in. So it's kind of cool. I, I, you know, they're taking advantage of well gestures, and uh, I didn't get a chance to fully check out how the like the Google integration is and how much of HTC's apps are really kind of being pushed on you. Uh, but what was nice was the uh, right out of the gate, I didn't see any kind of like try the new you know, HTC T, uh, Sense TV app right now. Like if, the, the only big ad I saw was was an Amazon ad, and that's not HTC. That's Verizon and mm-hmm. Amazon having that kind of uh, ag- agreement. But, uh, yeah, I, I, th- I think it was really nice. Uh, curved edges, a lot more curved edges. I don't know if Apple's going to have anything to say about that, but it's a lot more curved than the, uh, the original one. And... Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think this is going to be a good one, a good year for them. I was a little upset that they didn't announce smartphone, uh, smart watches, because they did say that they're going to have smart watches. I don't know if that was a rumor or not, but I think they did officially say that they're going to do smart watches this year. And it just seemed to me that since everyone announced their smart, well, you know, Motorola and LG announced their smart watches last week, that it would be apropos to announce it. You know, uh, why do why do they gotta right. do it if I did it? Why do why do I gotta do it if they did it? I'll do it when I'm ready to do it. So I'm I do what I want. I do what I want. By the way, the HTC One on the Google Play edition, I just looked it up, is actually four ninety nine. It's a hundred dollars off, and they're offering free shipping. So if you are interested in getting that one, Google Play edition is a hundred dollars off, and they're doing free shipping. So wait, so for for the M eight? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, actually, or is that the old HTC One? I I don't know. Google. I typed in HTC One Google Play oh, came yeah, out. Well, if not, then they need to update their prices because the old one is still not going for much less. <laughs> anyway, all right. So while uh, Tony gets clarification on that, let's go ahead and take a quick break here, and let's thank our sponsor, which is Audible.com. Now I mentioned them a little while ago because one, I believe in a service. Two, it's a really cool service. Three, you get a freebie by signing up with this URL here that I'm giving you. And like I said. It's a cool thing. So audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Use that URL to sign up. What you'll get is really an entirely cool and new way to enjoy audiobooks. You actually get to have them read to us that actually fits usually a lot better in our busy lifestyles. We'd actually just have them while you're jogging and working out or while you're working and cleaning up the house. You can go ahead and have these things on and really have all this and be able to listen to all these books. You can stay more productive. You can listen to them anytime, any place because, well, they have 150 books, to, I mean, over 150 options to choose from, and it works on every device, including Android, iOS, um, Windows Phone, and it goes on and on. Hey, tablets, Windows, Android, iOS, um, what do you call those? Tab- um, Kindle tablets and more. So it works on just about any device. They also have new releases, the latest bestsellers, and a lot of other good things. It's essentially just a great selection. So use this URL here to sign up. This is audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. If in doubt, sign up, use get the thing, sign up for free, and get that at least get that Ready Player One book just so you can get a reference point to the conversation we're having I had earlier about VR. But sign up, check them out. I know you will absolutely enjoy it, and well, 
Enjoy. <laughs> well, and well, thank you them for being a sponsor. As Tony sends me a message at the last minute. Either way, the um, HTC One. No, it's six ninety nine. As Tony is corrected. So it looks like the old one is eight ninety nine. The M eight, as they put in parentheses, is six ninety nine. So is yeah, that more that's... expensive than the other one, or is that's more yeah. expensive than the other one you mentioned? You, got the, you said uh, was it five ninety nine or six ninety nine without a carrier, or is it just the same price? I oh, I think is I think it's the same price. Like I could be I could be off by a hundred. All right. Well, you, well, <laughs> either way. All right. Well, it's available now. Like Tony said, unlike any other HTC M8 device that was out last year, this is real. This has happened, and it's available. All right. Yep. All right, Tony. Let's talk a little bit about Disney. Well, you so, you talk about Disney. I'm gonna I'm gonna float away for five seconds. Go. All right. So as Tony floats away, I'm gonna bring up Disney. So. Disney is actually purchased a YouTube ad network, which is a very interesting purchase. And the reason why is because, well, a lot of the YouTube ad networks are very are struggling a lot to make money. They're actually struggling to make a profit. Um, the one that Disney picked up was this one called Maker uh, Maker Studios. They happen to have one particular very popular person called uh, what was it again? PewDiePie. Uh, PewDiePie, exactly. I think he does video game uh, videos and he like does some great comedy. Yeah, it lo- it looks like PewDiePie, but it's it, it's pronounced PewDiePie. <laughs> so, but now they have officially purchased them for five hundred million dollars with a further payout of four hundred and fifty million dollars if they can get performance targets. Yep. This is some serious stuff. They have over five hundred fifty five thousand channels with five point worth generating five point five billion, and essentially they're doing this to well. Um, Strengthen their position as a leading player in online video. Yeah, it's also a farm for them to find the next talent, you know. Yeah. So I was curious, do you think this is just more of a talent search, a talent grab for them, or do you think it's just more of a do – you, do you think – I mean, because the YouTube networks have been struggling, and yeah. you, but Google slash YouTube has been trying very diligently to make YouTube a viable – Entertainment source, like why buy cable when you can use YouTube and get all this entertainment there at your disposal? Do you think um, this is that? Do you think the latter is what Disney after, or do you think it's more of just like a now we just want to get some new ideas and just snag some talent and see what happens? Well, I think it's kind of both. Um, you know, like like you had said, a lot of you know for those people that are cord cutters or if they don't have the premium package of their cable provider, so they don't get Disney, aka me. Um, you know, the next best thing I'm going to do if I want to watch a Disney show, uh, I'll either try Hulu or I'll be on, you know, I'll be honest, I'll see if it's on YouTube. And <laughs> I've seen full movies Disney on YouTube. Now, I'm not saying Disney would ever do that, but they realize that's what a lot of people do. They're going to go to YouTube. So why not take advantage and take advantage of a piece of the pie? And the fact that Maker already has a lot of content over 55,000 channels, um, generating about 5.5 billion views each month. That's pretty vast. And if they can get, you know, ju- you know, if they can get all, they're obviously going to get all of that, and they're going to get a bunch of eyes. Now, whether the viewer sees that as a Disney content or not, I don't know. I don't know if Disney's even going to have a say in say in. It's like, well. We'd rather you not have this topic because now that you're owned by Disney, Disney prefers to. I, I, I don't think Disney's going to do that because um, then that's going to really wrangle a lot of content creators on YouTube like the wrong way, and they're going to probably go to a different YouTube studio. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I... I I, I so, definitely see uh, they, they just want to make sure that they're on every possible uh, facet, you know, wh- whether it be through tablet, through, you know, through Hulu Plus, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. for all those Star Wars geeks that are watching Netflix, uh, on, uh, The Clone Wars, a.k.a. me. You know, they, they want they want to be everywhere possible so they can rake in as much money. But, yeah, they also want to see who the next up-and-coming uh Stars, you know, if they could find, you know, the, you know, a lot of YouTubers, obviously, they're they're getting a lot of views from comedy and pranks, and uh, one popular show, I know it's not Disney, but it's on Cartoon Network, 
is uh, Dude, What Would Happen If, and it's, it's hosted by Andrew WK, and it's very much of kind of a YouTube-esque thing where it's like, dude, what would happen if we ran down the street uh, hitting people in the face with cream pies, and then when they got mad, we would give them, give them like 10 bucks, and they would like, oh, it's okay, and then they go and do it. You know that that seems something so so much like you would watch like a, a five minute video of people pranking, and you know be, because we watch stupid videos like that, you know, and they may or may not make it to TV. Uh, YouTube wants to, you know, or not YouTube, but Disney definitely wants to take advantage of that on YouTube. But if they have an actor that could possibly be good on the regular TV screen or even the silver screen. This is where to get them. Yeah, well, it definitely is an interesting move. We'll kind of see what they do with it, and well, see what they do with this channel and all that. By the way, um, I like to watch old Popeye cartoons on YouTube. All right, so and I'm talking about the old black and white ones. Those are also also great. I can't whistle. <clears throat> yeah, but you know, but you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Like the Sinbad, the Sailor. Oh, of and the, course, yeah. Oh, yeah. Such classic, funny ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yes, they have the full ones on there. All right, Twitter music. What? Dead. What's that? Dead. <laughs> Dead. Now, okay, now what was our opinion? Were, weren't we just kind of like, like I was being very My, my opinion yeah. at first was this is cool because now I can see what's on Justin Bieber's playlist. Like I and cared. I was a cynic like about I cared. That. Then you were so cynical about like that's not on his playlist. They're just <laughs> paying him to say that's on his playlist. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And then I said to myself, well, that's not very honest. <laughs> that can't be – that's not good. And I was like, well, you know, part of me is like, okay, I, I, I kind of want this to work. But at the same time, music discovery – and we're going to talk about, you know, another company that bought a discovery app. Um, music discovery is, is, is very – it's hard to do in the sense – to, uh, to make it stick. Yeah, I don't you know. know and don't and think... the fact that they had this completely separate app that it wasn't even available for Android, I don't think, it was yeah. like, oh, let's, let's, uh, you know, I and I get it, you know, music apps are already separate. I fine, I get it, but I don't know. They just, they the execution of it wasn't done too well, and they just they never. I don't think they ever really updated. They definitely didn't do any major updates. Never made the news. You know, and so it just kept – it was just there and taking up server space. And so it kind of goes back to my thing. Was, well, you kind of said it a little ago. It was like it was just kind of there. Now, when, I, when in the tweet – in a tweet, of course, because that's how they communicate information. What the Twitter company said was, we will continue to experiment with new ways to bring you great content based on the music activity that we see every day on Twitter. So in other words, they haven't given up, but they did realize that the method they are trying, it, it didn't work out very well. So the separate app – issue with the recommending fake recommendations from rock art is not the way people like to discover music. Surprise. What if... Okay. Uh, <laughs> so you know how on Facebook now you can you can add like little emotions? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'm feeling very pensive today. And then you can say what you're doing, like I'm watching uh, House of Cards. Or I'm mm -hmm. listening to Yo, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach or something like that. Do you think if they were to add something like that to Twitter, like saying like, you know, the, the stuff that's going on and um, that's going on in Ukraine is really pissing me off, and then there's a little like hashtag listening to Bon Jovi, and then in the Twitter app because you've done that, there's like a little player that comes up and you can preview the the latest uh, Bon Jovi single or something. Do you think if they did something like that where it's integrated into Twitter, like that would catch on, or is that still pushing it? I, I don't know if that would. I don't. It's hard for me to say about with that example because I have to put more thought into it. But my initial inklings as I'm thinking about it is uh, probably not. I'm actually trying to think of a way that they could possibly do it. I'm like, well. They're trying to go for music discovery. So are they trying to have discovered new artists that aren't signed, or are they looking for trying to get people to experiment with more songs that are for people who are already signed? Okay. 
So if you're trying to do people who are already signed, then maybe you should worry about more music discovery or do a better job with the jukebox or integrate it with Twitter better that when you log into Twitter, you can have a jukebox on the right side, sort of like the SoundCloud Reverb Nation thing. I don't know. Um, and then you click buttons and you... It, it's I, I think right now there's a lot of people trying to figure this out and there's no answers because no one knows, no one knows what the answer is. But I don't know. It, well, how... Do, See, talking to you about music is is difficult because you're to a certain degree you're in the business on on many different fronts, mm -hmm. um, and you understand the business. Whereas the average person, they're they're gonna they're gonna discover music maybe in a different way, well, maybe maybe not maybe a little bit more organically. Yeah, the way people discover music is the most common way. It's called from their friends and other people, things they see, people yeah. they talk to. That's the way people discover music. So what Twitter would need to do is somehow or another get into that. But if Twitter, a corporation of any sort, gets into the middle of a conversation between two people with music, the people with music will just go somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, th those are those conversations I don't know if a corporation could ever really get part of, but I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, let's... Um, this is let's continue on. It's hard to say exactly what's going to happen, but Twitter music's dead, and well, they're going to try again. We'll see. We'll keep you updated on what they try to do in the future. So Spotify, here's a little head, a little uh, heads up for students. This is if you happen to be in college in the United States. Well, you have access to the unlimited ad-free version of Spotify for five dollars a month which is half the normal $10 a month price, but you'd have to buy it in a year in advance. So since we're talking about music and we're on that kind of a deal, well, guess what? Spotify's got a little deal here that's happening for you that we're college students that might be, well, beneficial for you if you're interested. Um, so, Tony, if you're a college student, that be do you like that idea? If you're yeah. In college? Uh, you know, oh. I... Um, um, Spotify and uh, what, what's the other one called? Google Pandora are, 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 are like you know one of the top two. Um, see, the thing is, Pandora is all. Even though there are ads with Pandora, I think as a, as a uh, as a college student, saving five bucks a month is 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 worth the savings. Mm. I don't know, dude. I think so. Here's the. I understand the five bucks a month. Like if you're struggling and you're making every dollar count, that's it. But if you can't cough up five dollars a month by not going to McDonald's one weekend to have all the music you want all month long, I don't know, it's kind of an advantage to that. That's, so, that's called yeah. budgeting your money correctly. You no, know, I agree with you on that one. But mm -hmm. you know, do people want to take the time to build their own playlist with all the music that's available to them, or do they just want to rely on someone to say, "Hey, uh, because you like." I, it work. This kind of this definitely segues into what we're talking about with Spotify, mm -hmm. but the whole music discovery and just have a jukebox. I'm more of a jukebox guy, and then mm -hmm. and I, I go I go between months. One month I'm a jukebox guy, like just play everything that's in the same genre because I just I just want to learn about all these new bands um, or or old bands, you know. Um, and then another month of say, well, based off of that one month of just jukeboxing everything, I'm going to pull one band or one artist out, and for this next month, all I'm going to do is listen to him or her or them. And that's that's what I do, I, um, and podcasts. But uh, <laughs> Well, I couldn't tell you if what you do is the right thing. I'm kidding. No, everybody has different ways of music discovery. Yeah, everyone has <laughs> diff definitely different ways. Uh, Obviously not not Twitter music, not Twitter, music. <laughs> but you know. But this it's, is uh, good. You know, this, this this is definitely a good thing. I mean, it you know, Spotify it's, needs it's to do bucks. something. To, yeah. Five bucks, all the music you want. And you know what? If you're a Spotify member, well, I want you to go ahead and check out this artist. His name is Sean Wilburn. S E A N W I L B U R N. That's me. Check it out. I'm on Spotify too. Anyway, so the um. Sign up. I mean, I don't, not, you don't have to sign up. It's just it's a good deal. Like, it, I don't. I kind of like music streaming for five bucks a month. It's kind of like, <laughs> why not? Everything I want to hear, I hear the new Macklemore song on the radio. Here, why not? Nope, the new album just came out. Great. Like the new Allo Blanc album came out. Yeah, so I, that's I will admit that. I mean, usually with uh, services like Spotify, for whatever reason, it is um, when an album comes out, Spotify gets it almost the day after. But with mm -hmm. free. Services like Pandora sometimes it tends to take a while mm -hmm. unless you pay for it. So if you're gonna end up paying for it, then then I, I get that argument. Um, yeah. I don't know. 
but it, we'll see. It will. I don't know. I'm. I'm. Ha- well, we'll see what happens. I'm just thinking it's just more avenues and it's a good deal. So people, yeah. if you like money, if you like to save money, boom, save some money. <laughs> and I know Pandora just raised their fees to like six bucks, some six ninety nine a month or something like that. So Still cheaper than the ten dollars everybody else charges. So yeah, yeah, true. So all right, Rhapsody. Now we talked about this a couple weeks ago, or Tony reminded me that we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Rhapsody. <laughs> well. Echo Nest was a, a music recommendation company that was purchased by Spotify recently. Well, looks like there's been a recent update from Rhapsody, who used to use Echo Nest, and now they're not so much. So, Tony, you had a little insight on this one here. Did I? I just said... Uh, well, mainly <laughs> just, my like, insight was ready. we talked about it. Done. All right, good. There it is. So, Echo Nest is... A, um, well, I thought you had a little something on that. So, Echo Nest was purchased by uh, uh, Spotify, and since Rap- and Rhapsody and... Echo, since Rhapsody and Spotify are competitors, Rhapsody is not now not doing business with Echo Nest anymore. Yeah, I remember so, that when we discussed this last time, all we said was, you know, uh, Echo Nest was still going to be available to other services so they could continue using Echo Nest. So yeah, although well, it's going to be a Spotify company, you know, if you want to build your own streaming company and use Echo Nest, you could pay Spotify essentially and I don't know, it was kind of like a, a little bit of a redundance, like why if, if you're going to use Echo Nest from Spotify, why even why, why, why you even bother? Right, exactly. So, besides Spotify, Echo Nest used to also work with RDO, Vivo, Vivo, whatever the hell it is, Xbox Music, and others. And RDO has dropped their service, and now Rhapsody is officially dropped. So RDO and Rhapsody, who both used to use Echo Nest, are saying, done, we're out of here. <laughs> so do you think that they have something up their sleeve, like um, maybe not together, but they have engineers that had said, you know, let's uh, reverse engineer what Echo Ness has done to a certain yeah. degree. Obviously, they don't want to steal their code, but say, okay, this is basically what Echo Ness did. This is why we were using them in the first place, obviously. So let's let's kind of do something similar. Or are, are we is, are we going to see the end of at least music discovery and recommendation from the likes of Rhapsody and RDO? Uh, the answers are money and no. <laughs> money is probably the number one reason why, because both of these companies are like either they found people who are hard to work with, or the co- the new costs that are involved to now get it through Spotify, because the service is available, but at what cost now? Maybe the amount of money that they're gonna that the um, RDO and uh, Rhapsody would have to pay is maybe double than what it was to pay, and it's not financially viable for them to keep using that service. The ant- to find out what they can do, immediately they can do is they, they could use tags to do any kind of music recommendation. All right, you're in the uh, jazz genre. Let's at least give you other jazz songs within the jazz genre. That way, so you got it right. And they should have those tags on their system already. So I'm figuring they could probably use that temporarily until they can find another music discovery company. And considering how Twitter is struggling to find music discovery ways of doing so, and these companies are dropping one as Spotify is buying one, I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of other music discovery companies trying to jump in the game because they realize this is definitely a viable business. Because I don't, I mean, well, I would hope that somebody else would, but it seems like you differ on that part. Oh, no, I was just going to say, one thing I really liked about Spotify, although it was a little intrusive at first, um, I, I really did like how uh, the Facebook integration was that when someone created a playlist or if they liked an artist uh, or a bunch of people liked a new artist, uh, they let me know on Facebook, like, oh, okay, well, it was the the epitome of friends recommending somebody and me saying, okay, well, because my friends like this artist, let me see what this artist is all about. So um, I, I really did like that kind of um, – which or, organic kind of recommendation, but you know if if Echo Nest yeah. has been you know um, successful in the past, then well at least if they were successful, or people have been using them. But now Spotify bought them and they're going to use them, and now no one else is using them. So we'll see how successful that ends up. But more importantly, I was the thing about um, from what you're just dis- oh god, what was I going? I actually it doesn't even matter. You know, let's get back move on to the next topic. All right, Apple said to be. 
considering a Spotify competitor. And also, iTunes for Android. Now, Tony, I know you saw this and you were like, oh my god, iTunes for Android, this is what I've always wanted, right? I, I, I do. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so uh, what's happening here with the uh, possible iTunes radio, these two rumors, or this little bit of leaked information here? Uh, well, essentially, uh, iTunes radio, or rather just you know, the, the iTunes itself, is possibly going to be available on the Android platform, which is something that Steve Jobs was never, ever going to consider. Uh, he's actually been, was quoted in the infamous well, Isaacson book saying that, you know, he didn't see the advantage of putting the music app on Android, although it would make users happy, but he doesn't want to make Android users happy. However, Cook has no quote-unquote religious issues by porting the software over. We've already seen Google put the Google Play Music software on um on iOS, so it would be interesting to see how that kind of cross-platform, that cross-integration competition would pan out. But, uh, you know, I, I, I see this would be a benefit for those individuals that have older iTunes libraries from pre-2009 that still have DRM on there and Possibly this would allow those tracks to be played on their new Android devices because they've moved from iOS to Android. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know, but uh, um, they're also considering putting iTunes Radio, which is free with ads or $25 a year with, ad, uh, with, uh, with Song Match or whatever it's called. And uh, it would, that would definitely be another competition to the likes of Spotify. Sure, why not? <laughs> the, 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 that, the, this whole streaming radio market is so crowded. You know, competition is great, but then when it's, it's like when you go into a department store and everybody's trying to give you a sample of their perfume or their cologne and they're already pre spraying it for you and it's like this is just way too much. I don't even mm -hmm. I don't even know what I came in here for anymore. I just want to buy shorts, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, everybody's going to stick with something. And one thing I like is that, you know, the, the likes of applications like Slacker Radio is available on everything. Now I don't nor I don't use Slacker Radio anymore, but I actually downloaded it on my Surface Pro. It's like, oh, this is why I started using Slacker Radio in the first place because it was on BlackBerry, it's on iOS, it's on this, it's on that, and um, it's very simple to use and it's free with ads. And you know, I, I only get three or five or six skips an hour. Big deal, sure. Um, I don't know. It's uh, well, I'll yeah. say this much. I think um, it's something. It's interesting. You know, actually, the real reason why a lot of these companies do this is just so they can keep the people in the ecosystem. And just like you stated, oh, yeah. there are a lot of, pe there are a lot of people who buy Macs who don't have Android, iOS phones. I happen to be one of them. I'm a, I have a Mac, I'm a Mac user with a ridiculous amount of iTunes library that I have absolutely zero access on my phone. So, you know what? If they could bridge, a bat, bridge the gap and possibly make me an iTunes buyer without having to buy their devices, I think it's a win, and let's just see if they're able to pull it out and really do it right. Yeah, no, if you go to YouTube and you type in how to bring iTunes to Android, there's a plethora of different videos of people recommending different ways to do that. And mm -hmm. if they were to just bring this app over, that would allow you to very easily and for free allow you to listen to uh, those tracks um, through iTunes, then that would be great. Now the question is though, because um, on iOS, if you were to listen to the full album from like Jason Mraz or something, and then they say, well, uh, based off of this album that you listen to in full, maybe you would like Gavin DeGraw. I was like, oh yes, mm -hmm. I would. Let me buy that. I don't know if you would be able to do that remotely if you're on the Android side. So I don't I, I'm just saying, like that would be like this extra thing where I don't know if that would be such a good idea because if you're on Android and they, and they were to give you that similar recommendation, it's like, oh well, where can I buy it? Oh, I can buy it on Google, or I can buy it on Spotify, you know, or 
or uh, yeah. whatever they'll, else. They'll probably link you to the web store, the iTunes web store. Yeah, but have. it's you know when you're doing that on the phone, it's like oh, I have to go to a website hey. to buy it. I don't. Hey, I'm just. It's a possibility. No, I mean, no, I, I agree with you. I'm just. I'm. We're both vamping on and just trying to figure out like what they could be thinking about it, but. I don't. I I, you know, it's like I don't. I don't see Apple bring Apple Maps Android, you know. And I didn't. Sure. I also don't see them. I, I truly don't see them doing this. And I, I know it's no longer. Uh, I, it's still an Android issue. You know, you, you still hear it from Tim Cook. He has snarky remarks about Android, and. Um, hmm. Yeah. I'm sure he had snarky remarks about Windows, yet iTunes is on Windows, so we'll see. Okay. All right. Another thing that Apple is, well, looking to do is this. Now, this actually kind of goes on the heels of a Netflix Comcast deal from a couple weeks ago, and this isn't too different, but a little bit different. Um, it is being reported that Comcast and Apple are in lead to allow that the Apple set-top boxes will have a special priority and a special, like, streamlined pipe that allows their entertainment to go along their pipes to reach their customers. Now, the reason of this, uh, why they need this deal, well, apparently, this is, it is the set-top box that we have been talking about that has been rumored for a while. The set-top box is supposedly different than a regular cable box. It's supposed to have on-screen menus that are going to be better than the guys that we get on the cable boxes already. And it also was supposed to have the focus on gaming. So if you remember on our Lord to Gaming shows months ago about us talking about Apple getting into gaming and all that, this is the same box that they're rumored talking about. This also could be this infamous Apple TV that we've been hearing so much about over and over again could also be this same device. But what's going on is Apple was was reportedly working with Time Warner Cable to try to get some kind of specialized pipes going, but then Comcast and Time Warner have reached an agreement to be, well, merged, and now Apple's in talks with Comcast to do the same thing. Um, now, I guess this entire buying special pipes for a company to get your content to the consumer is now going to be a normal thing because now first um, Netflix and now looks like Apple is going to be doing this too. So, Didn't Comcast sign the net neutrality deal when they bought a NBC yes, saying that until 2018 they can't give preferential treatment to anybody? But this is obviously some kind of work, some kind of thing that allows them not to. Because I don't, I think maybe they found a way of not hindering everybody else, or maybe saying, "Look, if we take you, Apple, all your bandwidth, and Netflix, all your bandwidth off the internet, we can improve everybody else's service without charging them more, and for a few bucks, you can improve your customer service." At the okay, same time. so is I, I I don't want to jump on this net neutrality bandwagon like we all did with Netflix and then we all got it wrong what? Um, hey, hey, hey. Yes, so is this similar in that like Apple is just gonna pay Comcast directly as as the content deliver like they're gonna be the CDN or it's is that what it is that what this is? It seems to be similar, meaning that well here the way they're describing it, and this is on the article they describe it is articles traffic special treatment over the last mile of cabling between an exchange and customers' homes. So it's designed to avoid internet congestion by typical internet traffic. That is what they're saying. It's hard to say anything more than that because that's the only bit of information. But my guess is, yeah, it actually has to do very similar to what the Netflix one. Hard to I can't say it's a um, I can't say it's a net neutrality deal because maybe they did find a way of saying, look, we don't want to hurt the other people, but we found a way of helping them out and helping you out at the same time. And in the long term, it actually saves you money. And that could be possibly a, a an offer they made them and. Apple could be really considering it. Maybe Netflix saw a similar offer and like it makes sense to do it. I mean, Netflix on the Apple TV, if you look at all the streaming boxes, Netflix on the Apple TV is by far apparently the best quality. Like okay. you get HD and if you have a 4K TV, you get the super HD 4K that they they they've been talking about. So, um, that's cool. And but that's because Netflix is or is it Apple that's paying the CDN for Netflix? I forget who who's doing it, but um, 
that's that that's um that's not a net neutrality issue because there's this this not really a competition thing and neither would this I don't know. Well, well, now before people get too far, this is what's going on, and I guess this is the argument. So yeah, this is so it's not quite a net neutrality. It looks like they want the Apple TV thing to be a cable box. From what I'm seeing a little bit more, it looks like they want it to be a cable box. Yeah, this isn't going to be like the end all be all cord cutter solution. No. It's not. It's a cable this box. This is going to be instead of getting a Motorola cable box like you do now, you'll get an Apple TV cable box. And oh, if you have Apple stuff, it just works that much gooder in your household because y'all have Apple stuff and now you have AirPlay that much easier and you don't have to go out and buy a $100 cable box uh, or a $100 Apple TV box. You just have it integrated into your Comcast cable box. And if say it's money for Comcast, maybe they don't have to send out as many cable boxes. So, but here's a here's a little bit of information. So, the article came from the Wall Street Journal, and they're but they are saying that neither company are close to the agreement because this is what the dispute they have is. So, Comcast would have to invest heavily in technology to help to help satisfy Apple's desires, um, just to make sure this can happen. Both companies are both want to retain customer information. I guess they're both trying to figure out who gets all that information because that is very key. And Apple is seeing if they're trying to get a cut of Comcast monthly subscriber share, like the month the money the money they pay. So that hundred twenty dollars a month for a bill, Apple's trying to get a cut of it because we're using their box. So I still, see. Okay. Yeah. So there's still some disputing happening between that, but this looks like a replacement cable box that could be from Apple. And you know, maybe if they can figure this out, we could possibly see that Apple TV box that we've been hearing so much about for very long that, you know, I'd said it was a phantom. But the Apple TV is a phantom. It does not exist, I told you. We'll see, Sean. I'm telling you, it doesn't exist. Okay, Sean. <laughs> if it exists, then... <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> just throw my hand up in anger. All right. Cool. All right, we, looks like we We missed the Sony Sorry. thing. Are we going to talk about that? Or we're just going to... What's stay? Sony thing? The, the Sony is not going to do Android Wear. Oh, suit. Sony's not doing Android Wear. Hey, dude, Sony's not doing Android Wear. Is that a mistake? Uh, no. It, let them do it. Really? I was actually surprised. I actually thought you would be kind of thinking, since Google is behind the Android Wear and the protocol, the API, and all that stuff behind it, that um, Sony, since they're not utilizing it, that they would be kind of setting themselves up for more work or something. But you yeah. don't feel that way? No, they are, but it's it's they're building their own their own like Sony's been in this whole building their own ecosystem recently and you know they have um, the, the news the the new livelihood thing like at CES they they had this whole new lifestyle thing where they had the the smart watch and the smart bracelet and they have to have these apps that work perfectly uh, uh, in, in congruence with each other, and Android Wear, as as a cool, wonderful, and beautiful solution, it is uh, for those that are looking to build Android wearables that would work with you know smartphones and uh, things like that. Uh, Sony's doing something that's so specific to their products that if they were to have to base it off of this completely different code that it might screw it up for them. So, Well, I think this one article kind of sums up what you just said at the same time, and it kind of goes in there. So we are. This is from uh, some people at Sony. Oh, I didn't even read the article. Oh, no, this is from the site one, I think. This is actually from a, the CNET article that actually did the original reporting. We are excited for about the potential of Android Wear to extend the mobile OS experience onto wearable devices. While we are, while we are currently focused on our in-market wearable offerings, including SmartWatch 2, we continue to work closely with Google as a key, par a key partner and continue to evaluate opportunities across areas that will extend our smartware experience. In other words, they gotten too much investment into what they have now. They have to continue with the product they have now before they make any major changes. Yep. Yep, that's pretty much what they're saying. And at the same time, if they come up with their own product and it works really well and it's and it's very successful, then they'll stick with it. If it turns out they do that and the smart watt and the the Google stuff is a better option, then I'm confident they'll probably just switch over for the next one. 
Sound, sound they, reasonable to you? It does, sir. Good to hear, man. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now that we got Tony in there, I think we can go ahead and uh, looks like we're in this show. We only went 10 minutes over. Not bad, Tony. Not, Not bad. bad. Yeah. Not bad. All right, so for all the folks who are watching, thank you again for hanging out with us. We appreciate you, all the people watching live and all that. Also, we'd like to thank all the people who are listening to this on their um, all the podcast apps, including like Stitcher and many others. I, I like Stitcher because it's the one I like to use. I like uh, Pocket Cast. You like Pocket Cast. But it's Lazy Tech Guy shows up now. on both. Lazy Tech Guy shows up on both. It's awesome. All right. Uh, let me give you some contact information for us. Comments at LazyTechGuys.com is where you can email us. You can also give us a call at area code 707-722-5299. You can actually find us on all the social networks, including Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. If you look up uh, Lazy Tech Guys, not Twitter Music, but regular Twitter. Um, you can also find us on our YouTube channel, which is Lazy Tech Guys. TV. That's the one you want to use. Sign, um, subscribe to that channel there, and we have a lot of updates that happen very, very regularly. That well, we want you to check out. Why? Because well, we like them, right? We said so. That's right. <laughs> All right, Tony. Anything else here you want to add here before you, uh, we cut this baby off? Uh, you can now buy Klingon beer from StarTrek.com. That is great. You can also get a free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. You can also buy my album, Sean Wilburn, on all the digital music stores, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all that. Go ahead and check it out. And there's be a new album coming up very, very soon. A lot of cool stuff. So. Well, real quick, talking about Spotify, did you hear about that band Wolfpack? That yeah. um, they're trying to raise money to go on tour, and so they have a full album that's available on Spotify right. called Sleepify, and it's just pure silence. Just track after track of pure silence. But because it's a regular track, they get 0.06% of the playing of the track. Of play, right, of playing it. So if enough people do that, put it on a repeat while you're sleeping, they'll get paid. And then they can go on tour. <laughs> So how about this? You go ahead and check out my music, and if you like the music, support it. And if you don't like the music, don't support it. How's that for an option? <laughs> I love that one here. Guys, everyone, thank you for hanging out with us, Tony. As always, thanks for coming out with me. Um, we'll be back next week. And, hey, we'll be back soon. Guys, have, um, have a great day. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Peace.